Houston, this is Station. We're working the final checklist. We're sealing the hatch now. Roger, Houston copies. Recommend you implement an immediate emergency return. Come home. Minus 60 seconds, that's why I am. 250 miles out in space, aboard the largest spacecraft ever built, the International Space Station, there is an emergency. The crew must get home. You are go for undocking. No space shuttle is available. A Russian spacecraft is too small. Time is critical. For such an emergency, the station must have a lifeboat or ambulance always ready. A spacecraft designed to bring the entire seven-person crew safely back to Earth in under five hours, able to land on full autopilot if they are sick or injured at dozens of potential landing sites. A prototype rescue craft is now being built, called the X-38. Its innovative development paves the way for a new generation of low-cost, high-reliability spacecraft. The X-38 must do what no existing spacecraft can. It must hold seven astronauts, yet fit inside the payload bay of the space shuttle for launch. It must withstand the harsh environment of space for three years on the station, always ready to depart in only three minutes. It must have the flexibility to travel from orbit to landing in just a few hours. The X-38 combines time-tested designs with cutting-edge technology to meet these needs. And with new techniques in design, testing, and manufacturing, it is being developed at a tenth of the cost of previous estimates for a rescue craft. In building the X-38 crew return vehicle prototype, we have two big challenges. The first is in building a custom human space rescue vehicle. No one's ever done that before. The second big challenge is to reduce the cost. We're going to build an entire fleet of vehicles for less than half the cost of building a single space shuttle. Not just a blueprint, the X-38 has taken flight. Several test craft, like this one, outfitted at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, have been shipped to the Dryden Flight Research Center in California for an increasingly complex flight test. The tests prove the X-38 each step of the way. The station lifeboat must bring home a possibly injured crew with a gentle ride through the atmosphere and fly to a landing site as it descends. For the X-38, NASA uses a shape from the past, successfully tested, but never before on a human spacecraft, the lifting body. The shape provides a large amount of cross range relative to a capsule. Instead of pulling the trigger and going exactly where it's aimed, I can pull the trigger on a lifting body and I have 700 miles to either side of that initial path that I can maneuver. Extensive lifting body research was conducted in the 1960s and 70s, and the X-38 shape is a modified version of the X-24A, a NASA and U.S. Air Force research craft. But a traditional lifting body requires a long runway, perfect weather, and high speeds to land all of which could limit the ability of astronauts to get home quickly and safely. The X-38 couples its proven shape with new features to reduce those limits and perform as three craft in one. First, as a spacecraft, using a deorbit propulsion module to escape the station, fly in space, and re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Second, as a lifting body, flying toward a landing site as it descends to Earth. Third, the X-38 is equipped with a parafoil, a giant steerable parachute that allows it to fly to a pinpoint low speed landing on simple, reliable skids. With a parachute, you simply point yourself into the wind and do a flare maneuver just like you would if you jumped out of an airplane and, and land it nice and soft. So any big flat surface is now a landing opportunity for me. In Columbia, Mississippi, over six million stitches create the X-38 parafoil which expands in five stages to 7,500 square feet, one and a half times the wingspan of a jumbo jet. The largest parafoil in the world, it can carry 25,000 pounds. Meanwhile in California, a new X-38 test vehicle has arrived and is being readied for its first flight. 
While earthbound tests continue, in Houston, engineers prepare for the next step, an X-38 that will soon fly in space. At the Johnson Space Center, an X-38 hangar bustles with activity as NASA engineers construct several vehicles. Unlike the test craft in California, this version of the X-38 is being built to withstand the rigors of spaceflight. It will soon be carried to orbit on the space shuttle and released to fly home alone, the ultimate test for a space lifeboat. Construction of the spaceflight X-38 is well underway. Parts are being added continually. Today, the European Space Agency has delivered two rudders. Partners from around the world, eight different nations, are helping in the project. New technology streamlines the manufacture of the X-38. The majority of the work is done in-house by NASA in Houston. Three-dimensional computer models are fed into machines that carve the final spaceship components. We'll take it from a solid block like you see right here to a piece that's near complete here. And uh, it'll have, it's very accurate and uh, it's a fine looking part. And I'm sure it's going to work really well. For the first time on a human spacecraft, the X-38 has a composite skin manufactured in a multi-step process by both machine and by hand. For the X-38, as with any space structure, we're interested in lightweight. And uh, composites give us about 20 to 30 percent weight reduction over typical aluminum structure. Using computer models, blocks are stacked, glued together, then gently ground down to create a pattern from which the final skin is produced. Insulating tiles, like those used on the space shuttle, able to withstand almost 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit during descent, attached to the skin. Side by side with proven equipment, the X-38's brain and muscles use the latest aerospace advances, blazing a trail for their use on future human spacecraft. Electromechanical actuators, electric motors which steer the flaps and rudders of the X-38, weigh only 10 pounds, yet move with six tons of force in a fraction of a second. They replace conventional high-maintenance hydraulics used on the space shuttle and most of today's aircraft. The X-38 navigates using global positioning system satellites rather than complex mechanical navigation platforms used on past spacecraft. Through a new technique, the software brain of the X-38 has been developed at a fraction of the time and cost of past flight software. And for the first time in space, light through lasers and fiber optics fire explosives on the X-38 that jettison its engine. Using light rather than electricity eliminates potential interference in space. But despite the planning, testing and designing on the ground, Proof of the X-38 is gained in flight. Dawn in California's Mojave Desert. Here, history has been made for half a century as pilots expand the envelope of human flight. Today, the X-38 will write its history. Attached to a giant B-52 bomber, it will be carried to an altitude of 39,000 feet, then fly free in the highest, longest, and fastest test to date. The X-38 will follow the true path of a space lifeboat for the first time. At the landing site, teams will both monitor and recover the craft. If all goes well, the X-38 will land gently a few hundred feet away. During the flight, all X-38 systems will be tested, including the cockpit. But there will be no people aboard the X-38 today, and the cockpit controls won't be inside the actual test craft. Instead, they'll be located inside another vehicle. It's a true remote cockpit, and in that format, what I mean by that is we park it out in the lake bed, and we, it's stationary, it doesn't move, but we have all the vehicle data, video, uh, and communications inside of this van to simulate the cockpit of the X-38. 
The van is placed in position with the recovery team. From here, commands can fly the X-38 and astronauts can test the cockpit design. We're about 15 minutes out, 15 minutes out. From a control room a few miles away, technicians check the X-38. All systems are go. When the bomber's up there, all the intensity, the excitement of all the engineering people here at Dryden and Johnson, you can hear them, uh, gets very high. Uh, you're very confident in all the work that you've done on the ground, but still your adrenaline's pumping. Plans have gone from the mind, to computer, to reality. The X-38 will now show its true colors. Five, four, three, two, one, launch, launch, launch. For a minute, it flies free. The lifting body maneuvers on target. The X-38 now takes a precise path, intercepting the same altitude, speed, and trajectory a rescue craft would follow coming home from space. 26,000 feet, the transformation from lifting body to parachute begins. An 80-foot drogue parachute opens, the first step in slowing the lifeboat. As it stabilizes, the drogue is cut away. The giant parafoil deploys, opening in stages as its chambers fill with air. Winches pull lines to steer the parafoil. The ground team watches, issuing commands. Astronauts inside the van use camera views from the X-38 to test the cockpit. For simplicity, the X-38 will have no windows. The crew will steer by closed-circuit TV. The control room monitors the flight. Chase planes, helicopters, and jets record the action. The parafoil has done its job. The descent has slowed to only a few miles an hour. Touchdown, right on target. Not bad, guys. With each flight test, the X-38 gets better as we learn how it flies in its real operational environment. And what we're learning applies not only to the X-38, but to all future human spacecraft. The International Space Station is as safe as technology can make it. But in an emergency, if the X-38 is there, this testing will ensure that the crew has a safe trip home.